This place is fun, loud, fast-paced, modern, new, futuristic and traditional. These are just some of the words that begin to describe this metropolis. Many gush about this location, rather like a schoolgirl in her first crush, and few ever regret their stay here. This stop is Tokyo. Let us unwrap her alluring charms right here on Culture Shop. Japan is a relatively small country. It's 148th the size of Russia and 125th the size of China in land area. It's composed of four main islands, Honshu, Shikoku, Kushu, Hokkaido and many other smaller islands. The city of Tokyo, however, is located right in the middle of Honshu, the largest island. Tokyo has four seasons and one of the best times to arrive in Tokyo is in the spring during the cherry blossom season where pale pink flowers can be seen everywhere. Arriving here in mid-autumn, there's a very nice atmosphere about the place. I suppose it's a little bit of a pity I'll miss the cherry blossoms, but uh, there's more enough to make up for it here. The Tokyo Airport International is located in Narita City, which is 60 kilometers away from Tokyo. There are a few ways to get from the airport to the city, but the most convenient and efficient ways are by train or bus. The ride into the city takes about 1.5 to 2 hours. This often gives foreigners the impression that the city is very far away from the airport. Cutting through Narita city to reach Tokyo, you get nothing but great glimpses of rural Japanese life. We slowly start to see the Tokyo that we've seen in the travel brochures emerging. The first thing you notice about Tokyo City is its pulsating dynamism that strikes you through its skyline and its rush of people. Tokyo is a city in constant flux. To date it has about 30 million people living in the city by night, but by day the figure swells up to 15 million. This is because up to 2.5 million more people from the outskirts of the city commute to Tokyo for work. If you have never been to big cities, the sheer number of human traffic commuting in some of these train stations will make you speechless. Added to that chaos is the complexity of Tokyo's subway map. Once you've found your way around, the next thing you want to do is find a place to rest your weary head. But if it's your first time in Tokyo, be warned. Things are not going to turn out according to what you expect them to. Wow, I heard the rooms are small, but... In this densely populated city, land is scarce and space very expensive. That is why with the same budget for a hotel in other Asian cities, you will get a significantly smaller room. Nice bathroom for a dwarf. Oh, if you're a big fella like me, Tokyo hotels aren't the best place to lounge around in. Oh. Knock some bumps aside, if you can get over your initial claustrophobia, Tokyo can be fascinating to the first time visitors because the city is elegant and immaculate like a geisha. Its roads are super clean and everything spick and span and in order. Nary a hair is out of place. Even its architecture, neon light advertisements and fashion scent embodies this immaculate vibe. Think of Tokyo as a finely cut diamond, a scintillating gem with many facades offering visitors an array of unique experiences. And things can even get surreal. That's right, in Tokyo, anything can happen. Live advertisements like this are just part of Tokyo's quirky and very creative approach to life. Whether it's their age-old habit of attention to detail through traditional cultural practices like the Kabuki or Harajuku fashion, the Japanese are all about pushing boundaries, especially in Tokyo. And it's this same and deeply entrenched innovative culture that's led to Japan's obsession with electronic gadgets, which has made them one of the world's leading giants in technology and scientific research. And evidence of this can be seen here at Akihabara's Yodobashi camera shop. From the smallest to the world's biggest television, this gives you 103 inches of high definition visuals. What a monster!
And high tech isn't just confined to electronic stores. Tokyo is always in a rush, and for things to run like clockwork, you need all the help you can get, which is probably why you see these at every corner of the streets vending machines. Tokyo has vending machines for many things. In areas where it's inconvenient, you can even get vending machines for the odd household items. What we have here is a vending machine for placing your food order. It's basically an automated waiter. What you do is you choose your food, you put your money in, press the button, coupon comes out, and then you just go into the restaurant and your food will come. What could be simpler? It's very popular amongst business people. Tokyo has surprised me more in one day than I have been in many years, and this is because of its unique outlook on modern life. Dare I say that more surprises are coming my way tomorrow at my business meeting? Well, let's see, shall we? Tokyo is one of the three World Finance Command Centers, along with New York City and London. Tokyo is a major international finance center that houses the headquarters of several of the world's largest investment banks and insurance companies and serves as a hub for Japan's transportation, publishing, and broadcasting industries. And as early as 7 30 a.m., you'll observe Tokyoites getting ready to do some serious business for the day. So you better be early for meetings because the Japanese are very conscientious of time. Being punctual for your appointments is a must here. The earlier, the better. Hello. 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 Nice, nice to meet you. you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. okay. My name is Yamato Furuta. Yamato Furuta, but yes. I just say your surname, right? Fur Furuta. Furuta. Furuta san. Hi. Japanese people usually call each other by their family or last name. Given names are only used amongst close friends, couples, or family members. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it's Yuiki san. The san is added to the family name. For example, they call me Chido san. It is best not to address them by their given names unless they invite you to do so more than once. And it's not just names. Japanese in general are also very careful about the exchange of name cards. The positioning of the name card in relation to the other party also reflects respect. To accord respect to the other party, you place your name card in a lower position than the other person. And if you thought that was complicated enough, wait till you have to communicate with your Japanese counterparts. The Japanese language sounds to me like a, like a very a lot of tongue tip sounds, like, like a typewriter. I think that's right. Is that, did you say that's correct? I'm not sure because I'm Japanese. s o u n d like that to you? Does it sound like that to you? So, who's the quarter card? So, Kana, Do Kana. To me. English is taught but not spoken as much in Japan. Most of the Japanese know how to read and write much better than they speak. They can write beautiful, grammatically correct emails, but when it comes to conversations, it's another matter. It's best to just stick to learning a few Japanese words to get you by. Konnichiwa. 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 Which means hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, that's a good way to start. That's easy. Sayonara. It means goodbye. Sayonara. That's lovely. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. O genki desu ka? O genki desu ka? O genki desu ka? Yeah. The Japanese language has formal and informal forms. When speaking to seniors or doing business to show respect, the formal form is used. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Then there's even the localizing of English words. Yes,、yeah, spoon. In Japanese, spoon. 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 Right, so you actually sound out the consonant sound at the end. Uh, cup. Two. Yeah. Two cup. Cup. But cup. 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 But Japan is not only about talking quirky English, it's also about body language. Understand that in this country, learning how to take cues without the spoken word can be very useful in helping you negotiate your way through uncomfortable or embarrassing situations should they happen. The first thing you should know Japanese rarely maintain eye contact. 
Doing so can be perceived as being challenging or threatening. So instead, Japanese people may look in the direction of another person's forehead or throat. If someone waves a hand in front of your face, it actually means they're refusing or saying no to you. For example, if a Japanese woman cannot understand what you're saying in English, she may wave a hand to let you know that she doesn't comprehend what you just said. Now, while the Japanese are more forgiving about foreigners not understanding their customs, as a rule of thumb, be absolutely mindful and respectful about the Japanese way of doing business and you will be fine. After getting a crash course on language and body language, my Japanese business associates and I head off for our appointment. The Japanese are known for their bow, so how low you bow reflects how much respect you're paying someone, especially if it's an esteemed colleague or boss. Do bow when you greet a person as well as before you take your leave. It helps you make a better impression. However, it doesn't mean the Japanese are inflexible. These days, they are more adept to shaking hands with their Western counterparts. Besides bowing, seating arrangements in Japanese boardrooms are also reflections of a person's rank in an office or organization. And it's important to note that high-ranking officials sit furthest from the door. The most prominent feature of Japanese culture is its group orientation. Group goals, group achievements and group interests are often emphasized in social and business settings over the individual. Their decision-making process also involves groups of people and as a result, the process can sometimes take a long time. Let me get my documents for a moment, please. Even though office hours are officially from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., it is quite common for Tokyoites to work till 10 or 11 p.m. For foreigners used to a 9 to 5 working culture, this can be hard to get used to. Working long hours is such a common phenomenon that there is even a term for death from overworking. It is called kaloshi. Tokyoites not only work hard, they play hard as well. And it is a popular practice amongst colleagues and business associates to socialize after work. An izakaya is a type of Japanese drinking establishment serving food that accompanies the never-ending flow of drinks. Some izakayas offer tabe hodai, which is all you can eat, and nomi hodai, which is all you can drink deals. I've got to tell you, if you can drink like a fish, like I am now, then you're bound to score some extra points with your business associates. I mean, lick of heaven. Kapai. Kapai. On the surface, Tokyo is a modern, gigantic metropolis. At first, you might be overwhelmed by the city's complexity, but once you get to know the place a little better, you will find moments of simplicity. Shinto is the indigenous religion of Japan. It is animistic and based on the belief that kami, which are sacred spirits, reside in natural elements such as mountains, rivers and forests. These kami must be honored if humans want to comfortably share their environment with them. Shinto priests perform purification rituals in the presence of the kami to promote harmony between human beings and nature. Today, the Japanese people come to Shinto shrines to mark milestones in their lives and to wish for blessings. Now, if traditional Shinto shrines are your thing, then don't miss out on another traditional Japanese experience in Tokyo, a ryokan the history of the Ryokan is fascinating in itself. Apparently, it was an inn that served travelers along Japan's highways back in the Edo period, which was around 1603 to 1868. All rooms typically feature tatami matted rooms, communal baths and other public areas where visitors may wear the yukata and talk with the owner. These days, guests aren't expected to talk to Ryokan owners. Instead, they are treated like royalty here. 
Right. And I, I'm sitting on top of a pillow, which is on top of this uh, spongy ah. uh, material here. What, oh. What's this no. flooring? <laughs> <laughs> this is called tatami. tatami. It's a, tatami. Like Japanese flooring. Ah, okay. Oh. oh, let me explain just a little history of, of uh, tatami. Okay. okay. You see a round part of tatami, this green part? Yes. Okay, this is called fuchi. Fuchi. Mm -hmm. Which you're sitting on right now. Okay. On the back to Edo era, you're not allowed to sit on here or step on it. Oh, really? Well, I'm, I'm sitting on it now. Though. But it's okay for now. But okay. Because uh, this one shows the emblem of the family. And um, I'm very intrigued. What's this uh, in between you here in this tray? Oh, this is yukata. Very nice. Do you know? What? Well, no, I don't. What? What is this? <laughs> Casual kimono. Casual kimono. Okay, so like uh, a nighttime kimono. Can I wear this? Oh, please, please. If you I know put it, it on, please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good, but it's a little <laughs> short. <isn't it? laughs> the sleep part should come up to here, but it's like <laughs> wearing uh, kids <laughs> kimono. Yes. Hey, um, this well, all I can say is wearing a yukata can be fun, but that's where it ends because rooms in a ryokan can cost quite a lot in Tokyo. Now, while I was ever ready to stay and lounge in my ryokan for the entire day, I couldn't pass up an invitation for my Japanese friends to experience another favorite traditional occasion here in Tokyo, a sushi meal. Kanpai! 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 Oh, wow, what have we got here? Hi. This is a variety of types of uh, raw fish. Raw and, uh, fish. Sushi. Sushi. We oh. have tuna, mm, salmon, salmon, ika, ika uh, squid, tamago, uh, tamago egg. egg. Really? Well, let's. Um, Let's get stuck in. Oh, Niku Niku san. Niku Niku. There's a word we have to say before we eat. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. What's that? Ah. Okay. 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 Itadakimasu okay, is an important ritual to observe when eating meals. It's not only a simple way to give thanks to the chef for preparing the sumptuous sushi dish he's whipped up for you, but also to give thanks for the rice farmer and for the life of the fish. But that isn't all. Learning how to handle chopsticks before beginning your sushi meal is another important practice to observe. You lift it. them up, okay. okay. Underneath. Move them. Them. Move them. Move them. Uh, okay. So, okay. okay. So, mama, slide, slide your hand under. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, hold it. And open it. Wow, great. Ah. Perfect. Perfect. I like to just measure it up oh. like that. Nick, that's not good. Really? It's oh. not good to do that. Okay, not polite to... Finally, we get to eat, and Yomato tells me how to enjoy sushi the proper way. Please. Please. Okay. Oh, great. You dip the fish part into a soy sauce. Ah, you dip it upside down. You yes. know, whenever I've had this before, I've always mm. dipped like this. Mm. But, so that's not good, right? Mm. Mm. You dip like that. Mm. 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 Oh, see? Mm. Delicious. You know what? It's better that way. Mm. I don't know why, but it's better that way. Mm. Because if you put a rice part into soy sauce, you're gonna taste more soy sauce than the fish. Right, it's like a sponge soak. soaks it all up. Exactly. Okay. <sighs> what about wasabi? Do you do that mm. in a particular way as well? Oh, I'll teach you. You tip, take it. Yes. You put it on the fish. Wasabi. Instead ah. of soaking into a soy sauce. Mm -hmm. A lot of wasabi. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Mm. Good? Oh. Oh. <laughs> good? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh. 
Wasabi headache. Wasabi headache. Yeah, wasabi headache. <laughs> I actually quite like it like that. You like it? I quite like it. With all the complexities surrounding the meal, I found it hard to think why Japanese considered sushi meals a relaxing occasion. All these rules just to eat raw fish? Talk about pressure! But the night wasn't over yet because there was something else. My Japanese associates suggested we let our hair down with a favorite Japanese pastime, karaoke. Karaoke literally translated means empty orchestra. It began in Japan, and I think it's fair to say it is now a worldwide sensation. It is very popular amongst Japanese business people. I guess if your Japanese colleagues or friends invite you for karaoke, try your best to participate even if you cannot sing well. This will make others treat you as part of the group. The Japanese culture emphasizes some traditional values and beliefs that may seem different or unusual to foreigners, especially to Westerners. However, understanding these beliefs and values is often the key to successful interaction with Japanese people. Whether it's dressing, opening a business meeting, or eating sushi, the Japanese just seem to have a knack for turning everyday actions into art. You might fall in love with Tokyo, but Tokyo might not fall in love with you. But just like all relationships, it takes time. You've got to put in the work, learn the language, the culture, the way of life. And one day, Tokyo might welcome you with open arms. Till I see you again next time on Culture Shock. Sayonara! Oh, come on! Sing! Let's do a song! Sing!